sitio temporal, no se preocupe que cuando salimos de aquí. Well, what just happened? I'm saying what you just saw here is it happens every month, every month and a half. People come from the universities, they want to hear from us who we are. They, 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 they're tired of hearing what they say about us on the news. They don't care about that anymore. They want to hear direct from the horse's mouth, as we say in my country. Who are you people? Uh, what you believe, what you eat, why you women dress like that, why you wear beards, why you do this, how do you fast, why you fast, they're asking directly, they're asking all kinds of questions and this happens all the time in all the universities, the teachers, they teach and they talk about different religions and then they become very interested, we would like to know, we have Muslims in our, in our city, we would like to know where they are, we would like to see their place, we would like to know how they worship, how they think and they ask all these questions, so this is an opportunity which we take advantage of with the best interest to let the people really understand who we are. And alhamdulillah, this is happening here because we have our advertisement on the internet, so they find us on the internet. A lot of universities, they know about us, so they always come. They have had groups like, just like So if this. the masjid wasn't here, and it's only one masjid in Medellin, yeah. Something would seriously be missing from this city, yeah. and there would be a great loss a great to the loss. wider Muslim community worldwide. Loss. And I'm sure that the day we build a big, nice, beautiful, visible, big masjid here, the statement, it's going to be a beautiful attraction. People are going to come to it, and they're going to be coming all the time. They're going to be asking. People are extremely curious nowadays about Islam. So what you just recorded here, this is not the first time and it's not going to be the last time. Inshallah. Inshallah. <laughs> Alhamdulillah. We are happy to share Islam with the people. We are just happy to do it. I'm happy. You know, uh, 25 years ago I couldn't speak the Spanish language and I beg Allah, Allah, teach me this language so I can talk to the people about Islam. And today when it happened, when I do it, I feel very happy because I know Allah taught me this language and I can speak and I can explain to them who we are, what we believe, and what we eat, what we do, why we do, why we don't do. And you know, and I was basically explaining to them that there is no separation in our daily life and our religious life. I mean, our, you know, the, the religion is in everything that we do. Our business, our family life, everything, the religion is there. Our thoughts about Allah or about God is there in, in everything that we do. Even in a simple business transaction, we don't cheat, we don't tell lies, we don't cheat our customers because we know and we believe that Allah will question us. He will ask us, you know, so we have that belief. That's why I was telling them that we don't separate the, the, the religion from our daily life. It's not like I'm in the mosque, I'm a religious person. When I go outside, I do my business as I like. I was telling them that it's not like that. For us, it's not like that because we understand that one day we'll be called and we'll be asked and we we'll have to give up the right answers. You know, because I know in their culture it's, it's a different thing. So I wanted them to understand that we, we think differently. I explained to them things about our ladies, you know, that our ladies, they dress how they dress it because they are religious women. They love God. And just like the Virgin Mary is a model for the Christian, the, the Catholic woman, she is also a model for the Muslim woman. I even told them, if you let's make a, a respectable example. I told them, uh, if you want to compare the life of a nun compared to the life of a Muslim woman using the Virgin Mary as a model, the Muslim woman resembles the Virgin Mary much more. I said, you know why? Because the Virgin Mary had a child. Muslim women can have children. The Virgin Mary, according to your belief, not ours, she had a husband. Now, we don't believe that she had a husband. But if she had a husband, according to your belief, then the Muslim woman can have a husband. She can have a husband. A nun cannot do that. So the Muslim woman resembles more the Virgin Mary in her practicing, in her following religion, than the nun, respecting the nun, respect the nun. So I was telling a lot of things like that, you know. And I try to be very clear with them, very open. I make them laugh, they make me laugh. And, you know, I, make, I don't try to be like serious and like, you know, I try to make them understand we are normal people, we are nice people, we are friendly people. That's why I made sure I bought the drinks and I give them something that would be very bad if they didn't give us. Hospitality. As, you know, we have to show them we are hospitable people, we are nice people, we are not terrorists, we are not bad people, we are not, no, nothing like that. So I gave them all this type of explanation in their own language. It was nice. They enjoyed it. I enjoyed it. I always enjoy it. And I always try to make sure that 
you know, Alhamdulillah, Allah gave me this beautiful opportunity to, to, to be able to talk about his beautiful deen with people who doesn't know anything about it. I really enjoy it and I feel honored by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and I hope that this will continue to happen and that Allah will give us the opportunity to talk about Islam and that these people, these nice people, because as you see, they are nice people. They are Colombians, they are So nice just people. a question, who were they? Which university and approximate age? The university was Saint, they call it Santo Tomas. Okay. Give me a second. Uh, the university, La Universidad de Santo Tomas, here. Sí. Yes, it's the University of Saint Thomas. They call it over here. Okay. All right. So he was, he's a teacher. He contacted me and he told me that we'd like to have a meeting with you guys after your Juma prayer. I accepted it. He said I'll be coming with like 27 students. I said no problem. So he came with like 30 something students. No problem. And this happens all the time. Alhamdulillah. Alhamdulillah. May Allah really make this beneficial for us and for them. You know, I love these people. I really wish all of them become Muslim, inshallah. Inshallah. I mean, and if not, at least a friend to the Muslims. Yeah, inshallah. I, I love these people. Colombians are very nice, friendly, open minded, warm, welcoming people. Yes. They love foreigners, as you can see. They're yes. not these bad people that they show on the TV. It's not like that. They are very nice people. They are, they are like us, you know. Yes. They have a bad name, we have a bad name. <laughs> yes. When you come to the masjid, you see Muslims are really yeah. people. When you come to Colombia, you see Colombians are really nice people. Look at them. I'm saying, and, you know, I love them so much, man. They're so friendly. I really love and I'm, I'm happy that I learned to speak their language. So, you know, and I'm happy. I really, I feel excited about sharing Islam with them. I feel better sharing Islam with them and going to a Muslim and telling him come to Salat. Because I he's a Muslim. He should know he knows his job. You know we know saying? what we're supposed to do. But I'm not saying that you mustn't do it. You should do it. But it's much nicer to sit with them and tell them we believe in, you know, we God, we believe in Jesus, we believe in the Virgin Mary, we believe in the book of Moses. And you surprise them with saying them things like that to them. They say like, oh yeah, I didn't know Muslims believe in Jesus. So I like to clear this up for them. I like to clear it for them that we believe in all these great prophets of God. But we don't worship them, we don't consider them to be gods. We know that they are prophets of God. I tell them things like that, I told them things like that. We, we have to follow them, we have to love them, we have to follow their teachings, but not take them as gods because they are not gods. They came to show us the way to God. They asked me the last of it to recite a part of the Quran. So I thought the best thing to recite for them was Surah Al-Fatiha. So I recited it and uh, I, I translated it for them. You know, so mashallah, may Allah really put barakat and khayr in all of this. Inshallah. Brother Abdul Haq, Assalamu alaikum. Alaikum salam. I can't believe you really come to the